Hello, B here, and welcome back to Environmental Science. We've spent a few days learning about freshwater systems, but now it's time to head into some of the marine waters of our hydrosphere. Do you remember the difference between freshwater and marine systems? Marine refers to water that contains a high salt concentration, which is also simply referred to as salt water. Where do we find salt water on Earth? Did you just think, in the ocean? If so, that's true. But why would some of the water on Earth be salty while other bodies of water are not? Does someone stand over the ocean with a giant salt shaker? That doesn't seem likely. It has to do with the driving force of our hydrosphere. Do you remember what that process is called? The water cycle. Let's dive in and see if we can use the water cycle to find the salty source of these marine waters. So if it's not a giant salt shaker, where does the salt in the ocean come from? Before we try to answer that, let's first make sure we understand what we mean by salt. From previous science classes, do you remember the chemical formula for table salt? It's NaCl, or sodium chloride. Do you think this is the same type of salt that makes up the salt water in the ocean? For the most part, yes, it is. About 85% of the salt in the ocean is exactly that, table salt. But there are a few other types of salt too, including compounds made from potassium, magnesium, and sulfates. To solve the mystery of how these salts ended up in the ocean, let's trace back their roots on land. Other than in the oceans, where do you think we would find these salts naturally occurring on the earth? It actually starts with rocks. As rainwater washes over rocks and begins to erode them away, various substances within the rocks are released into the water. Two of the substances that are washed out of rocks in large quantities are sodium and chloride ions. What compound makes up the most common type of salt? Sodium chloride. Are the pieces starting to fit? The rocks may not have had salt in them, but they had the building blocks of salt. And when those building blocks get washed away together, they can join and form salt compounds. But wouldn't that just make the ground around the rocks full of salt water? How does it end up making the ocean salty instead? Remember the steps of the water cycle. Water that runs over the land is collected into streams, rivers, and lakes. Most of these eventually lead where? The ocean! So the sodium and chloride ions find their way to the ocean through the water cycle. So that explains how the oceans end up salty. Dissolved ions, which are the components of salt, get washed away out of rocks and flow into the ocean. But why do only the oceans accumulate salt and not the rivers and lakes that the salt particles flow through to get there? Again, the water cycle is to blame. The water in freshwater systems is constantly being replenished from rain and newly collected groundwater, which dilutes the salt and moves it along as fast as it forms. The oceans, however, are the final collection reservoir, so the salt has nowhere else to go after landing there. Even as water evaporates from the oceans in the water cycle, the salt does not go with it. Only the water molecules evaporate and form clouds while the salt stays behind. So does this mean that the ocean just keeps getting saltier and saltier? Fortunately, no, because remember that the water cycle also drops a significant amount of fresh water into the oceans in the form of rain, which dilutes the newly added salt, keeping the salinity, or salt level, of the ocean relatively stable.
Have you ever visited a beach where a river meets the ocean? What did you notice about the water there? We know that this represents the distinction between freshwater and saltwater or marine systems. But how does this transition happen? Is there a specific line over which the water suddenly switches from being freshwater to saltwater? As you may have guessed, it's not quite that simple. In this diagram, we see the fresh water from a river heading toward an ocean and the waves of the ocean carrying a tide in toward the river. There is an intermediate place where these two flows meet, which is called an estuary. Eventually, this water will continue flowing out into the ocean, as tide conditions permit. But while the water is in the estuary, is it fresh water or salt water? Well, we could say that it is both. Or neither. The scientific term for the water in an estuary is brackish water, which means that it is saltier than fresh water, but not as salty as water in the open ocean. But because it does contain some salt, an estuary is classified as a marine system. The estuary is the transition zone, and its brackish water represents an increasing amount of salinity as we move farther out into the sea. One of the largest estuaries in the United States is Chesapeake Bay, found along the Atlantic coast. Several rivers empty into the ocean here, including the Potomac and Susquehanna rivers. The bay is its own diverse ecosystem and is home to many different species of fish, birds, aquatic invertebrates, and mammals that are specifically adapted to life in the brackish water. Estuaries like this one are important because they trap pollutants and sediments from rivers before they reach the open sea. They also play a crucial role in nutrient cycling, breaking down organic matter and recycling nutrients back into the ecosystem. Once out of the estuary, there are several types of marine systems that water may pass through before reaching the open ocean. Which type we find will depend largely on the climate of the region the estuary was located in. In tropical waters, the shallow seabed of the continental shelf will likely form into a coral reef. Coral reefs are some of the most beautiful and diverse ecosystems on the planet, with their warm, sunlit waters supporting a vast array of life forms. But coral reefs are important for reasons other than our own amazement. They serve as natural barriers, protecting shorelines from erosion and the impacts of storms and waves. Many communities also rely on coral reefs for their livelihoods, as they support an abundance of commercial and subsistence fishing. But what if our estuary was not in a tropical environment, such as the estuary of Chesapeake Bay? In more temperate climates, how do you think the marine ecosystem just off the shore, known as the continental shelf, would differ from what is found on a coral reef? Like coral reefs, the water is shallow here and sunlight easily reaches the bottom, allowing for a wide diversity of both plant and animal life to thrive. While the reduced amount of energy from the sun means that you won't find the same level of biodiversity here when compared with coral reefs, these systems are still vital as they recycle nutrients and support marine food webs that are important for both humans and other species. In some parts of the continental shelf, a rocky intertidal zone forms. This occurs on areas of rocky beach, where tide pools form during high tide and then disappear during low tide. These pools are miniature ecosystems teeming with life, where marine creatures have adapted to the changing tides and harsh conditions. But eventually, the fate of most water drops is the same. Regardless of which path it took to get there, most water will one day find its way out into the open ocean, where the sea floor could be thousands of meters below. A few water molecules that find themselves near the surface may evaporate and enter the water cycle all over again. 
Others may find themselves at the bottom of the sea with thousands of pounds of weight from other water molecules bearing down on them. We'll take a deeper dive into the zones of the open ocean in our next lesson. But as we do, remember the other marine systems that water may have traveled through to get there. As we went through the lesson today, we saw how the movement of water through the water cycle leads to the salinity or salt concentration of marine systems such as the ocean. When the building blocks of salt are weathered away out of rocks, they flow through various freshwater systems of earth, finally collecting and accumulating in the ocean. To reach the open ocean, water flows through other marine systems such as estuaries and parts of the continental shelf. All of these marine systems support life and contribute to the functioning of their ecosystem. Until next time, remember, keep making waves as you dive in, explore, and keep learning. I'll see you next time. Hey.